Welcome to worship today. Thanks for having me again this week. It's a pleasure to be here with you all. Uh, I'm Pastor Jason Marino. Uh, I work as a missionary at large in the Houston area. Specifically, I've been doing discipleship over at Christ Memorial Lutheran Church on the west side. But during the week, I work on developing affordable housing with Harris County uh, in the area. So it uh, keeps me fairly busy, but also really glad to be a part of the community and serving as uh, best I can. Um, it's wonderful to be able to uh, work with you all today. And uh, we have an opportunity to worship. Let's hear, what song do we have? Oh, we're gonna be singing You Are My King. <laughs> oh, excellent, I think I've heard of that one, yes, excellent. Yes. All right, as you are able, please rise and let's continue with our worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
we each come to God's throne of grace realizing that we are flawed. We not only make mistakes that we don't mean to, but we also do things that we do mean to. And oftentimes we realize that there are so many opportunities that God has given us to live out his word, to be as people that we fall back on and we let go. Sometimes because we don't feel like it and sometimes because there's something that we let get in the way. This morning, as we come before God, we realize that whatever roles he's given us in this life, we oftentimes don't live into them. We don't become the best version that we can be, whether father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, coworker, friend. So this morning, we come before God in silence, knowing that he wants to hear that we realize our need for forgiveness. We bring before him our sins, the things that we failed to do, trusting that he is and will continue to be merciful. Let us take time in silence to reflect before God. As much as we spend time coming before God and repenting and saying, God, I have failed and I am a sinner, even more importantly than that is God saying, I know and I love you and I forgive you. And knowing how broken and how messed up and fallen we not only can be, but how messed up and fallen we truly are, God still sent his son to die for our sins. And I have the joy as an ordained servant of the word to tell you that your sins are hereby forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we realize that we are unworthy of Your grace. But Lord God, in the hour of the death of our Savior, the adversary did not prevail. And because of what Your Son has done, we are found worthy of everlasting life. Not because of what we have done, but because of what He has done for us. And we come before You grateful for Your mercy and thankful for Your grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. This morning's Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, verses 11 through 19 of chapter 20. And the vision of all this has become to you like the words of a book that is sealed. When men give it to one who can read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot, for it is sealed. And when they give the book to one who cannot read, saying, read this, he says, I cannot read. And the Lord said, because this people draw near with their mouth and honor me with their lips, while their hearts are far from me, and their fear of me is a commandment taught by men, therefore, behold, I will again do wonderful things with this people, with wonder upon wonder, and the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the discernment of their discerning men shall be hidden. Ah, you who hide deep from the Lord your counsel, whose deeds are in the dark, and who say, who sees us, who knows us, you turn things upside down. Shall the potter be regarded as the clay? that the thing made should say of its maker, he did not make me, or the thing formed say of him who formed it, he has no understanding. Is it not yet a very little while until Lebanon shall be turned into a fruitful field, and the fruitful field shall be regarded as a forest? In that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of their gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The meek shall obtain fresh joy in the Lord, and the poor among mankind shall exalt in the Holy One of Israel. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle reading this morning is from Ephesians 5, 21 through 33. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, submit to your husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and his himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Husbands, love your wives, as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. In the same way, husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it, just as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is profound, and I am saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. At this time, we stand and we profess our faith by singing, We Believe.
This. Blech. Seventh chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees gathered to him with some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, they saw that some of his disciples ate with hands that were defiled, that is, unwashed. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they wash their hands properly, holding to the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they wash. And there are many other traditions that they observe, such as the washing of cups and pots and copper vessels and dining couches. And the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, why do your disciples not walk according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? And he said to them, well, did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites? As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And he said to them, Oh, you leave the commandment of God and hold to the tradition of men. And he said to them, You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. For Moses said, Honor your father and your mother, and whoever reviles father or mother must surely die. But you say, if a man tells his father or his mother, whatever you had have gained from me is Corban, that is, given to God, then you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, thus making void the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And many such things you do. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. We sit as we sing, Good, Good Father.
Howdy. Well, thank you for having me back again. It's good to see y'all. All right. And uh, today we've got a great passage. Wives, submit to your husbands. Pastor Brady, do you hate me? Is that is that... I, this is what they do. They, they get the guest preacher to come in and to speak on the ones that they're like, I don't feel like doing this. And we even had a beer together. I thought we were doing great. Uh, <laughs> fine, I can take a hint. And you know, this is one of those fun passages that end up getting brought up during weddings and such. And you always wait to kind of see what the bride and groom are going to decide about whether they want the vows to say submit and everything else. And all right. And so with that is this part is always going to be a fascinating passage. Now, with this is I do have to make sure I put my disclaimers. Okay. First of all, this is not the only passage that is the reason why the LCMS uh, ordains men. This is not the only thing to discuss. So with it is that today we're going to push on it a little bit, but I'm not really worried about that, uh, mostly because I never worry about it, Um, but also um, because we don't really need to be worried about looking at the context of this passage there's not really any major controversy to deal with today. See, there are some main things that we can all agree on, typically. Number one, history was a very patriarchal place. History typically had men as the head of a household. That just is a historical place. So we don't need to worry too much on that part. Second part is the statement, women are amazing, not slaves. I want to make sure I put that on my dating profile. Women are amazing, not slaves. I'm sure I will get a bunch of right swipes on that one for sure. And in case you needed me to affirm that, well, (laughs) okay, there you go. And third, everyone is saved and able to speak the gospel to others. So hopefully these three things, we can get those out of the way. And now we can look at this particular passage because today is not any major aha moment. See, a lot of times we're waiting for for certain passages because we love the idea of catching people. Ah, I I heard what you said today. Now I got you. But there's nothing that is sneaky or underhanded today. So I'll go ahead and put my cards out on the the table for you all today. Uh, I am... Jason Marino, a divorced pastor, no kids. Uh, I love 80s love songs like Air Supply. I, I do. I'm all out of love. I'm so lost without you. It is just what it is. If I could live in Ireland, I totally would. Uh, and I get annoyed at the LCMS as a church body. There's nothing secretive about that whatsoever. And I think that dogs are better than cats because cats would totally eat you if they could. It's just reality right there. But the thing is, is that while I am more than happy to put out there the fact that I'm a human being and that I have my own flaws, so is Paul. Scripture is not trying to pretend that Paul is perfect. Scripture is not trying to pretend that every single thing that he said is exactly the way we wish he would have said it. And on top of that is that Scripture is not trying to say that. See, God took very flawed, imperfect people and he proclaimed his perfect, gracious word through them. And that's a good part about this is that we don't have to lose that in order to hear what God is trying to say to us today. And also beyond that is realizing that there are oftentimes where we debate which parts of what Paul said was descriptive saying this is the way things are versus prescriptive saying this is the way things have to always be. And we can discuss those and we can debate those. But today is not about trying to figure out if there's some trick meaning to anything. When we look at the word submit in this passage, it means the same thing from verse 21 that it means to 22. The idea of being subject to somebody. And if we were debating whether Paul really did have this patriarchal sense in mind, did he really see things this way? Well, 
We can go to 1 Timothy 2, 11 through 14, where he says that he thinks that women should stay quiet because Eve was the first one who sinned. Now, I don't know about you, but that's not typically how I start a first date. Just wanted to let you know, I realize that you're a woman and women were the first ones to fall into sin, but that's okay, I'll still pay for the meal today. That's the thing is that while sometimes a thing can be technically true, we don't necessarily always want to put it that way. I still remember as a 10-year-old, my mother coming up to me and saying, Jason, what do you think of my hair today? And I looked her dead in the eye and said, it is shaped like Australia. And that was very true and not quite what she wanted to hear. If you put your fist up like this, it's New Zealand. Um, but the thing is that technically things are true, but also technically uh, if Adam had already seen what happened when you fall into sin, he probably should have been smart enough not to do the same thing, and yet he was. But what was the real point of this? See, Paul isn't saying something strange. He's not creating some brand new way of looking at husbands and wives or anything, but rather what he's trying to get at is the idea that wherever you are at in your life is to live it out as a testimony to who God is. See, I've heard people come up with very interesting theories. We can read into this passage all sorts of things. The idea of husbands should love their wives. Some people take it as if husbands love their wives, but it's not actually important if a wife loves her husband. Or the idea that a wife is supposed to respect her husband doesn't matter if a husband respects his wife. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, how does that go on the ta dinner table? But with that is that this is not trying to create subtle differences as much as it is expressing that when we are in these relationships, how do we utilize them to live out the roles that God has given us? Where we are also determines every opportunity we have to proclaim who Christ is. You see, it's in a setting, verse 15 says, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And then he goes to verse 21 and says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. And I do have to say how grateful I am that Pastor Blaisdell went ahead and put that verse first because our lectionary passage technically does start with wives submit to your husbands. So I'm very grateful he started off with the true context is that we are all meant to submit to one another. And when I say that, it is because we are all constantly finding ourselves in relationship with other people. We are always in relationship with others. And as much as we love the American sense of independence is that at the same time, we are continually in connection with others. And there will always be times where we are submitting and other times where we might find ourselves to be the boss. There are times whenever we find ourselves under someone's authority and other times whenever we've been given that authority. Even when we look at our friendships, oftentimes when people looked at different Asian cultures, particularly when speaking to some of their philosophy uh, teachers, and they would say, why don't you ever talk about those who are friends to one another? And it's because they said, even with your friends, there are times when you're teaching one another and times when you're learning from one another. And that's the thing about what Paul is trying to get at here is that are we constantly asking why we can't be in a different role or a different place in our world instead of looking at where we're at and seeing why God has us there? See, that's the thing about this is that when we look at the people that are around us, who are the ones that we typically end up aspiring to be like? Are we aspiring to be with the ones who are constantly unhappy with everything they have to deal with? Or do we listen to those who can live into wherever they're at and make the most of it and be exactly who they're meant to be right then and right there? See, that's the thing is that coming into this passage, hey, I'm the single guy. 
I'm not going to come up here and try to pretend that I have every single thing figured out for marriage because <laughs> apparently I don't. But more than that is also the fact is that if today's passage is only about trying to keep all you husbands and wives in your place, not only would there be a bunch of us who are left out, but it would be missing out on the point. The point is not to try to limit us, but rather to empower us to further and further opportunities to love one another and to be the most of who we're meant to be. You see, this passage is not about trying to explain or explain away everything. See, oftentimes we can take passages like this and we can look at it, we can say, oh, well, this doesn't quite fit my scenario, so therefore I don't need to deal with this. We can look at issues like, well, what about the times when we look at issues of abuse? We can look at later passages that talk about slaves, and we can try to say, well, does that mean that Paul wasn't really talking about slaves? No, Paul was really talking about slaves. Does that mean that slaves are okay? No. It is not trying to pick it apart and find out whether or not we agree with every context of Paul's world because we are looking at a broken world that doesn't always get it right. But is it that we keep waiting for one more thing to be upset about in our life and in our circumstances before we can finally see God's grace? Are we constantly looking for something that we are upset about in our place in life and in our situation before we can stop and say, God be praised? See, that's the thing about this, is that while we are all equally loved, we are all equally redeemed by God, we don't always find ourselves in the same situation as one another. We find times when we are frustrated. We find times when we feel like this is where I'm meant to be. This is what I'm meant to do. When, when, we, when we are kids, we are constantly saying, when I'm an adult, and when we're an adult, we're saying, when I'm finally finished with school, when we're done with school, we're saying, when I finally get to the job I want to be at, and when we get there, we're saying, when I finally make enough money that I can retire, and when we finally get there, and we look back and we say, what did I miss? That's the thing about the life that God has given us is that there are so many times when we feel like it's time to fight a crusade or to try to change things around us, but what are we doing with where we're at here and now? See, that's the thing about this, is that we can oftentimes take this passage and misuse it in so many ways. And we can oftentimes use it and say, don't ever push against your place in life. Don't ever try to change things. Don't ever push uh, or try to assert anything as being right or true. Don't say whenever people have abused you, don't end up pointing out when things need to change. We have seen so many times in our world, in our communities, when people use place, passages like this to say, now you have to stay where you're at and that completely misunderstands where Paul is coming from. Is that it's not about telling people this is where you belong, as much as saying wherever you belong, you belong to Christ. Wherever you are, you are loved. Wherever you are, you matter. Even when we are in societies, when the roles that we are given oftentimes make us feel smaller, is that God is saying, you are amazing because of who you are. Not because of who you wish you could be, not because of where you hope to someday get to be, but because I see you right here, right now, and I love you, and I gave my son for you right here, right now. And I have so many amazing things for you right here, right now. And that's the thing about this, is that whatever roles that we have, we're going to fail them. We're going to fall. 
we're going to see the times when the fathers and the mothers don't know how to do right by their children, or the times whenever the children are so frustrated with their parents that all of a sudden the words come out that you wish you could take back. Maybe not at the time, but someday. We see the times whenever the husbands and the wives can't quite seem to find a way to become one flesh, and somehow they can't quite seem to figure out why it is that this marriage is meant to be a blessing. And we see the times whenever even those God-given marriages fail. But we also even see the times whenever we find other vocations that we live in. As, as lawyers and teachers, as doctors, as engineers, as soldiers and janitors, as people who work on the side of the road or people zooming down the freeway trying to get to wherever they think they're supposed to go. And we oftentimes say, why God is this the life that I am stuck in? But the truth is, is that God sees us wherever we're at and says, what I've given you to do, it may not always be wonderful or easy, and it may even be unjust in this world, but I still have something for you. I still have a life of beauty and of joy that only you can be there for. That's the thing about the wives and the husbands loving one another. And that's why he compares it to the church. Because whichever place you are in, it is not only for the husbands that are somehow the head of the house. It is not only for the wives who can take a break from what they think is supposed to be easy work. It is rather wherever you are, you are a new creature in Christ. And as much as the world may minimize you and may try to make you feel smaller, is that God says you are a part of a world that will never be the same again. And so with this, what we oftentimes see is that in these places we find ourselves we end up discovering more than we ever thought was possible. So of course, I had to go back to one of the you know, best sources of philosophy and understanding the world that I knew of, my big fat Greek wedding. And realizing that as the main character is sobbing because of what her father said and said he is the head of the house, and her mother looks at her and says, the man is the head. But the woman is the neck, and she can turn the head any way she wants. <laughs> is that oftentimes when we get so frustrated at what we see around us, we don't realize how much God gives us to do, to change for His sake. So I don't know where you're at. I don't know what's currently frustrating you with the life that you're facing. I don't know what it is that you wish could change. And I don't know if maybe someday it will. But I also know that God has so much more in store than you even realize. And I also know that it is not to be missed out on because if we miss even one opportunity to share the gospel, how devastating would that be? But even when we do, because I promise you, I am sure you have missed opportunities. God's grace is still forgiving and still continuing to move you into places where you serve his purposes and you do things you never even knew were possible. Not because you're pretending to be someone else or wishing you could be someone else, but because you are already the child of God and you are already the beautiful creature that he has called you and made you to be. Live it out today. Amen. We take this time to bring our offerings unto the Lord. I do not have any extra announcements, so if there are some, y'all are going to have to let me know that, because at this moment in time, 
I'm just going to grab these plates and I'm going to bring them up to here. I'm going to hand them to people and if I'm missing something, you're just going to have to yell at me to do something, okay? All right, so let's give it a shot. It is well indeed. Please rise. Lord God, we thank you that as much as we are frustrated with so many things that we face, so many circumstances that we wish could change, and so many times when we feel like we are pushed into a box and that we can't seem to push beyond it, Lord God, you have still called us to amazing things. You've still given us opportunities to share your word, to share your gospel. Lord God, help us to see those opportunities where we are now, throughout this life, even into the life of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we are hurting with all of those who are struggling in Afghanistan right now. Lord God, for all those who have served our country, those who have helped those who serve our country, for all of those who have been a part of the struggle of creating opportunities and freedom, Lord God, we ask that you would bring them to safety. We would ask that you would give them help and hope. And Lord God, even beyond that is to realize that there will be so many people that will be struggling going forward. Lord God, in ways that we don't understand, we hope and pray that you will continue to proclaim your gospel of hope and purpose, of forgiveness, that your grace would go forth even at this time when we don't know what the future will hold. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we ask you to bless those who are in our lives. Lord God, we ask that you would bless Pastor Brady as he has traveled to California and is returning home. 
that you would keep him safe, that you would be with all those that you have known, that you have loved now and forevermore. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we pray for those who are in need. Lord God, we pray for James and Carolyn who have struggled with COVID. We pray for Elva and family. We pray for Sam going through a test on the 23rd. Lord God, we know that there are those who struggle with mind, body, heart, soul. Lord God, we ask you to bless Pat going through various health problems as well. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, we look forward to the life of the world to come, but we struggle with the absence of those who have been in our lives. Lord God, we ask you to bless the family of Alan Brown, Eva's son, who has passed away. And Lord God, we ask you to bless Edna Gloyna, family and friends, Leonard's sister, who has passed away as well. Lord God, give them calm, give them peace, give them strength through the times of hurting, and give them the opportunity to mourn as you have allowed us to do. Lord, in your mercy, in our prayer. And we thank you for the joy of life and love with those around us. We thank you for Eric and Kim's grandson, Logan. And Lord God, we ask that you would continue to give us the opportunities to bless those in our lives, those who are around us, and to show all those who you are in your love and in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this and for all things, we thank you for hearing us, God. And we thank you for teaching us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It has been wonderful to come and to worship with you all and to give you all the chance to really, really miss Pastor Brady. With that is wherever you're at, I hope that you will be able to go forth and see how God loves you here and now and uses you for His glory and for His purposes. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Amen. All right. Thank you again, Pastor Moreno. All right. Well, we know that God loves us, and our uh, confirmation class today, you are to be uh, to memorize John 3.16, so hopefully this song will help you remember as you go in today. <laughs>